my game mm -hmm. away. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're playing for something. Just got a man something to do. Every day you get, every day you get, let's finish this. Do it, fellas. Let's do it, fellas. Finish. Hey, I got some wise words for that Cincinnati mayor. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni. You gotta fight for your right to party! You ready to make history? Come on now. Yeah. You know, there's, there's these two words. And when I say them, people get goosebumps because they, they know. They know what happens next. So without further ado. <laughs> Look, scared cause I'm drowning in silence with bad thoughts These days I don't have nothing to say, man, the bad talks I put in headphones on my driver Pull up to the spot and give a good dick and good diver. I can't lie, I'm uninspired No more pillow talking about nonsense I only stick around to put some band-aids on my conscience I don't know why I feel so bad, nigga That's what we do, no foundation We don't build no more, we just screw Half a bottle of Henny, girl, I'm going with the wind The same nigga say they happy for me Ain't want me to win, so I'm done on my friends Don't need help, popping Coronas And reminiscing, I just call up Big Bro J And say it's time for venting If I live forever, I hold this hate for some centuries You don't know how much I have you do Doing what it meant to me, but motherfuck all that I don't even know for up the time to make the call back Stupid low though, if they don't get the picture now Man, I crop them out of the photo, I can't relate to my peers Been doing this shit for years, I'm motivated by fears I took the wheel and I steered my sound Not dictated by fuckboys in Atlanta Stay gifted like this album was ghost written by Santa Boss Forever like they decided to throw me under slammer Every song's a hit like they pitching me underhand As I could drop a million songs, but they never gonna understand this Soapbox sermons for niggas Never giving chances Fight our whole lives to get these weak ass advances Work twice as hard for this shit that they getting handed And this ain't even nothing we chose, nigga, we branded Still can't tell why y'all of these niggas mad at me I'm trying to get a hundred so I can put my team on salary Give it all to the art, man, I turn my life to a gallery uh, Man, damn, with a fucked up masterpiece 1100 shots and I swear, man, I felt them all If we ain't even good on our block, man, who can we call? pre decline state of mind, we broke crabs in the barrel Got us fighting our folk, man, this shit just a life of peril Another episode of Kicking It With Saint Would you look at that? What a time How's everybody out there doing tonight? Yo, I hope everybody had a dope day I hope everybody out there had a dope day Had an enjoyable today I don't know why my words got kind of fucked there at the end Hope everybody out there had an enjoyable day. Big trade, big news in the NFL. The Chicago Bears trade the first pick in the draft to the Carolina Panthers for DJ Moore and a whole bunch of other things. They got they took I think they get Carolina's pick in the draft, so they'll get the ninth pick. DJ Moore. Um they get a first round pick next year, I believe, and a second round pick next year, I believe. They get a lot in this draft. And so we basically about to discuss, or I'm about to discuss. Was it worth it? Like, will Carolina strike gold from trading to first in the draft? And this is if you the Texans. This is exactly why I call this team a moronic ass team. Because you had the first pick in the draft all last year until you decided to win the last game of the season. And just like that, the quarterback that you could have possibly wanted will most definitely have a chance of being taken now by Carolina. Because Carolina didn't trade all that up to go get not a quarterback. Now, I am, I, I'm imagining the quarterback Carolina is about to take is Bryce Young. And if it's not Bryce Young, and it, this is going to be crazy. But it's probably, it'll probably be Richardson. Like, they'll probably look at him as their unicorn type of quarterback. So I could see them taking him. And this is a team that had, that that, I, me and my, I was talking to some of my homies today. And the thing that's interesting about Richardson, I think dudes like Richardson got to be thanking dudes like Cam Newton and Lamar Jackson for being so successful 
being able to play NFL quarterback and do those type of things, it's giving him a chance, a dude who is so raw in a lot of people's opinion, to still get taken as high as possibly first in the draft. But like we done seen in the past, just because you get taken first in the draft, that don't mean you're going to be successful. Baker Midfield was taken first in the draft. But I think they'll end up taking Bryce Young. Like I said, I think Bryce Young, the best quarterback in the draft. The only problem with Bryce Young is his size. But it, the longer he in the NFL, you would imagine he would put on more weight and things of that nature. So I, I can't imagine that would be a problem for his entire career. Um, maybe his first two years, he use them. He spend those two years bulking up, uh, getting bigger, probably to like 220 or something. But I can't imagine like if size end up being a problem, the problem for for Bryce Young, that'd be insane. But I want to talk about this trade. I'll probably I'll circle back to Carolina. I want to talk about Chicago because, you see, I was telling people when I talked about sports, like for the last couple of weeks, I felt like Chicago. And I might even said it on the show. Chicago is definitely going to keep uh, trade that draft pick. <laughs> it just. Not only was everybody saying it, the vibe started to just feel like, bro, this is a team that's about to keep the, this, that's about to trade away this pick. And you know, it's going to be a lot of Chicago fans who say, you know, this was a great move. You traded for, for one, I don't think DJ Moore is a first round pick. I mean, it's the first pick in the draft, like trading him for, and I understand you get the ninth pick. So really the difference between one and nine is what you debating, but. I don't think DJ Moore was worth the uh, the first pick in the draft as far as comp that but whatever. D I j bro, I'm about to piss some Chicago fans off, bro. Listen, if you listen to the show, you already know how I feel about Justin Fields, bro. I'm not finna mince no words. Justin Fields is not a good quarterback to me. Like, and I'm not saying that to be mean to take shots at Justin Hurt uh, Fields, nothing like that. When you watch Justin Fields play, bro, if you just sit down and watch this man play, just throw out all these excuses that you already have in your head. Because all the excuses that people continue to give Justin Fields, you literally could use that excuse for quarterbacks who don't had success with the excuse that you're using for him. And it didn't matter. It didn't seem to matter. You keep telling me he got a bad offensive line. Justin hurt. I mean, Joe Burrow had a bad offensive line. Lamar Jackson got a bad offensive line. Pat Mahomes had a bad offensive line. You tell me he ain't got weapons, even though I do not agree with that. I think Mooney and uh, Claypool are good receivers. However, you tell me he ain't got nothing in the cupboard. Lamar Jackson ain't got nothing in the cupboard. That ain't seem to be a problem for him as far as showing you that he a great, a good enough quarterback, a great quarterback. So. All the excuses that or, or he got an offensive mind. He ain't got an offensive minded head coach. He had one last year. So it's so many excuses that people give to Justin Fields rather than just watching what you're seeing and talking about what you're seeing. And the fact of the matter is this. For two years, Justin Fields done been the starter. And those two years I've seen no people keep saying like, oh, he made these improvements in the past game. How? Where? What do you see that told you that? Because most of his touchdown passes, which he basically had the same amount of touchdown passes this year that he had last year and more interceptions. If you look at the fact that they dumbed down the pass game, like go look at Chicago play throughout from start of Justin Fields career to his last game so far uh, of, la of the last year. They dumbed down the offense in both of those years to start the season. The offense looked one way. Because of how a god awful they start the season, they dumb down the offense. The receivers probably run like four or five different routes. Because Justin Fields, not only do he not have the, and he might might have the arm strength or whatever. I could care less about arm strength. What I know is he not making the necessary throws to receivers on certain routes, so they don't had to dumb it down to the routes that he can hit on a consistent basis. He too inaccurate and all over the place with certain throws that he got to make. Because he cannot make those throws that he has to make, which is a problem. Now you say, oh, well, you know, they ain't really been able to develop them, yada, yada, yada. And that's just a confusing thing to use as an excuse because who's to say the Ravens developed Lamar Jackson? 
that the uh, Bengals developed Joe Burrow. Like, to me, using that as a team don't develop quarterbacks, right, is just a ridiculous statement because we done seen so many. Bro, did the Colts develop Andrew Luck? Or did he just come into the NFL and hit the ground running? Sure, they do things to help his growth and things like that. But they didn't help. that, Bro, the talent was always there. Justin Fields was not a runner of the football in college. He is now a runner of the football in, in, in the NFL. And the only reason people were so high on him and say he got all these great moments is because of his legs. Now, if Justin Fields was a legitimate thrower of the football who just really did struggle because of the lack of uh, talent on the outsides, um, bad scheming and all those type of things, that'd be one thing. That is not it. When you look at Lamar Jackson on ESPN when they're talking about him and shit like that, all they like to show is his running plays. Even though this dude is more than capable, is a f- phenomenal thrower of the football. Is he Aaron Rodgers or Pat Mahomes? Who is? I think some people forget how Peyton Manning let that thing go on a, a normal basis. But... When you look at Justin Fields, I don't see that those things, bro. And it's hard to talk about Justin Fields because it always feel like I'm killing Justin Fields. But I'm just calling. I'm just telling you what I see from him in these first two years. The regression in the passing game or the the dominant down to the extent where it's like, bro. What? And then this year to have him run so much. And then you got the issues of oh, his legs fatigue, he tired. He could possibly be getting uh, nicked up because of all the running he got to do. Bro, the coach is not coming out there asking Justin Fields to run the ball 15 plus times a game. That's a Justin Fields decision. And being a one read quarterback ain't always a bad thing if you can grow from that. He done been a one read quarterback for two years now. And you're going to keep blaming everything around him. But when is we putting something on Justin Fields to help himself get better? Because I'm not sitting here telling you I don't want him to be successful. I'm sitting here telling you what is he going to do to become successful. Because when I look at Justin Fields, and this is why it's so weird to me that so many people talk like, I, I'm very, sports media is clearly garbage, bro. They, y'all want to be informed when you look at this stuff. They're not informing you. They're telling y'all a bunch of goofiness. It's no way you looking at Justin Fields tape. It's just no way. And you think to yourself, a number one receiver is the problem. Him not having that is a problem. That's in, in the defense. If those are the only two things you take away from when you watch just, that's disingenuous in my opinion and insane. And I don't think you know how to watch football because there's no way I sit down and say to myself, I'm trying to get a depiction of how good Justin Fields is. But I walk away from the game saying, man, the defense is terrible. He ain't got what? Bro, I probably know that going into the game. That shouldn't be my conclusion when I'm just specifically trying to figure out. So it's weird to me to see how people break down Justin Fields. Because, like I said, you sit down and watch his first game to the last game he done played with the Bears so far. There's no way you look at that tape and say to yourself, this is a kid whose only struggle is the fact that he don't have a good coach, he don't have a good defense, and he don't have a good uh, receiver. That is not what you see when you watch the tape. You watch a dude who don't throw dudes open. Whereas dudes who are open, but he will not make those throws because it's not Ohio State wide open. He don't uh, he not good at throwing um, under pressure. And some people say, who is good at throwing under pressure? Bro, it's a lot of quarterbacks who I'm not saying is phenomenal, but who can make throws under pressure. Very rare do you see Justin Fields do that. He don't have great pocket awareness. I already told you he don't throw dudes open, but he and he don't make those tight window throws. But the understanding of what he's seeing when he step back to hike the ball it clearly it's a lack thereof of his understanding of what he's seeing from the defense because to just pull the ball down and run as fast as he do on a lot of plays this year is telling me he don't understand the defense and what defenses is calling and what they uh doing to try to stop him especially when the defense changed from what it ran the first three quarters to the fourth quarter to where now you have to make throws and now you throwing interceptions or throwing overthrowing dudes, not throwing the ball where it should. So, and, and I also think it's weird that y'all try to blame the receivers for all these problems. When I understand if it was just a bad receiver, good quarterback, but I'd also understand if it was bad quarterback, bad receiver. 
Because obviously I'm thinking I don't think the quarterback is good enough. And y'all thinking it's not the, it's the receiver is not good enough. It can be a bad quarterback, bad receiver situation. Like, I think y'all think it can only be one or the other. That's not true. Also, while I said it, I don't think it's a bad quarterback, bad receiver situation because I think it's just bad quarterback situation. I'm not here to tell you that those are the greatest receivers in the world. But Chase Claypool and Daryl Mooney are good receivers. So th- th- this this excuse. Just watch the tape, bro. Like, if you want to help Justin Fields, it ain't sitting here lying. For one, I don't even think most of y'all watch Chicago Bears play. It's no way, especially to start the season these last couple years where these dudes barely know how to score the ball. And then they go through this little stretch where they can score like 30-some points for a couple weeks, and then they go back down to reality. They lost 11 games in a row, and I had Chicago Bears fans trying to argue with me in the YouTube comment sections about things. Like, bruh. It's And I haven't heard from these dudes yet. They have yet to reply to those things after going on a tangent defending Justin Fields, like telling me how stupid I was and how ignorant I was because I'm just breaking down what I'm seeing. But DJ Moore is not the savior for this team, in my opinion. For one, going to DJ Moore also, and it's going to sound like I'm disrespecting DJ Moore also, but DJ Moore is not a number one receiver. I don't understand how people keep saying that. DJ Moore is a number two receiver. At no point in DJ Moore's career, and I should have looked up his stats, even though y'all know I don't care for stats, but I really, I needed to look up his stats for a certain reason. But DJ Moore ain't never been a game changer for his quarterback. He ain't never been a DeAndre Hopkins for his quarterback, even when you playing with bums. He ain't never been DeAndre, I mean, Andre Johnson in his, uh, for his quarterback, even when you playing with a bad quarterback. Like DJ Moore, a good receiver. He got games where he go off, but for the majority of his six year career, he has not made any noise in effort. We see great receivers play for average to below average quarterbacks and still go nuts. That is not DJ Moore. If you wanted to go spend a first pick in the draft on a receiver, why not go get AJ Brown last year? That's the number one receiver. Why not go get the, I actually wouldn't have spent no number one on no DeAndre Hopkins, even though DeAndre Hopkins better than DJ Moore, in my opinion, right now, I'm not spending number one, but, to me, this overhype in the DJ Moore, which really started this year, is insane. Carolina Panther fans, they a cool fan base. I'm pretty sure they're not going to disrespect DJ Moore, but sit down and ask them to be honest. DJ Moore didn't change life for Carolina. Maybe it would have been different if he had Cam Newton playing. But like I said before, we done seen great receivers who were number ones shine even with bad quarterback play. Garrett Wilson just balled out in uh, New York. Terry McLaurin is religiously balling out in Washington. A.J. Brown religiously balled out in uh, Tennessee because the eye test, a lot of us can tell from the eye test, like, yo, that that dude's it. If you think D.J. Moore, number one receiver from the eye test, then, hey, good on you. You very lenient with that eye test because I don't think D.J. Moore, number one receiver. I think he a very great number two receiver. And he will be the number one receiver here in Chicago. And as much as I would like to say I like the DJ Moore, Chase Claypool, Daryl Mooney uh, core with Cole Commit, the reason I'm not really that influenced by it is or that hyped up about it is, for one, y'all overhyping DJ Moore. That's the first thing. Even though I do believe DJ Moore can still go out and be great, y'all still overhype. He ain't no number one. But the biggest problem with this is, If Justin Fields does not develop in the passing game, bro, he has to become a better passer of the football, bro. And I'm talking about way better than he has been the first two years. If he come into next year and he is only incrementally better than he was last year, you will end up saying this was a waste of a a trade that Justin Fields not the answer. And then you're going to hope that he end up playing bad enough so you can get the first pick in the draft again to right this wrong. But what do it say if the next quarterback you draft still not it and Trace and Bryce Young over there balling out for the Panthers? If he become a multi-time pro bowler, it would make absolutely no sense to me. So like I said before, it's no way in hell I would have traded that number one pick. I would have traded Justin Fields. But since they didn't do that, if you're going to go trade for a receiver, like I'm trying to think of another. Bro, I'm trading that first pick in the draft to go get Justin Jefferson, bro. Like, I'm not making the first, 
not to mention the Bears are going to have to hope that things go great or terribly bad because with Justin Fields, now you got one more or two more years before you got to give him a contract extension or pick up his option. Hit a problem. You Let's say everything go bad this year and Justin Fields prove he ain't the answer for you. Definitively prove it. Well, now you praying that he bad enough to where you get the first pick. Because if other teams get the first pick in a draft and it's just one quarterback, well, then your plan didn't go as uh, you thought it would. Because now you gambling on another quarterback once again rather than taking a quarterback in this draft. Not only that, if you don't uh, get a quarterback, now you say to yourself, OK, well, let's run it back with Justin Fields and hope that he can get better. So now you constantly playing this game of roller coaster. Will they, will they not with the quarterback? And so to me, I just think dumb organizations make dumb mistakes. And this is why Chicago ain't had a franchise quarterback in God knows how long. Listen, I'm not trying to kill Justin Fields, like I said before, but I'm not seeing the improvements that should have been made from year one to year two. I, hopefully the year three improvements is drastic because DJ Moore not going to make no difference for this team. I'm just telling you what it is. And then you're going to make us. Oh, it's the defense plan. Listen, Justin Fields, if he was a good enough, competent enough thrower of the football at this level. They had talent last year on the offensive side of the ball. I think Justin Fields has to make drastic improvements in the passing game. Like, he's going to have to get better at reading coverages. He's going to have to get better at anticipation throws, putting the ball where he wants the receiver to be, and not just the y'all calling those plays that when he overthrow people and be like, well, man, he really wanted his receiver to be. No, that's an overthrow, my guy. He got to be able to anticipate. Put the ball where it's supposed to be so the receiver can go get it. Squeeze balls in the tight spaces. Understand that, bro, six yards of separation it's not happening in the NFL most of the time unless it's just a broken play, okay? Or unless you run the air out the ball and then throw it over the top like they did a lot last year. He got to understand that it's going to be moments where you have to dissect defenses, methodically march down the field. And Justin Fields is not that quarterback right now. But hopefully coming into next year with the addition of DJ Moore in the offseason with these dudes, maybe it changes things. I'm holding out hope that he can be a good quarterback. But right now, I just don't know what overhyping him like the national media is doing really do for him. Like I rarely see anybody say anything negative about Justin Fields. And then I look at how negative people speak on Lamar Jackson. And it's like, man, this shit don't make no sense whatsoever. Like Justin Fields is nowhere near the quarterback that Lamar Jackson is. But people don't like Lamar and like Justin Fields. And your problem with the Bears is, oh, they don't got him no, uh, they he they don't have no weapons for him. Lamar Jackson don't have no weapons aside from a tight end, which Cole Komet is a good tight end. I don't know why people think, I actually know why people think. You're going to think all the weapons over there are bad because of what Justin Fields cannot do. And if you don't watch the games and understand what you're watching, you're never going to agree with that. It just is what it is. You're going to keep blaming everybody else, which I, I just think, how can you live with yourself? Knowing you don't sit down and watch all the full games and you're not all up into the game. Like you, you know, you're not a savant of the game. You know, you just a regular ass fair weather fan and then sit down and argue with people about shit that you know, you ain't in depth on. You know, you got to go search some stats. You know, you ain't got nothing in your head off rip for a, a debate. How do you live with yourself doing that shit on a regular basis? Like, is it enjoyable to be a troll or do you legitimately live life thinking like, bro, I know more than everybody else, even though I watch maybe half of a game here and there. Like, it's, it's just pretty crazy to me, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. But listen, the Justin Fields, I mean, the, uh, the DJ Moore trade, good for the Panthers. You get the first pick in a draft. You possibly get your franchise quarterback for the next couple years and getting rid of uh, trading. Uh, listen. I haven't seen the price that's too high for a franchise quarterback yet. It just is what it is. In this game, you need a franchise quarterback. If I had to give away DJ Moore in the ninth pick in the draft, I'd do it too. So I'm not mad at Carolina. I think it was a good trade for Carolina. And Carolina had to understand, like I just said, 
bro, we've been losing and being below average with DJ Moore. He's really not changed life for us. And as much as the NFL like him right now, that's got a lot more to do with age than really him. Like, I don't he hasn't stood out like hop D hop did when he was in Arizona. Like we knew D hop who D hop was even before he got a quarterback. We knew who Andre is. It's weird that both of these dudes play for DeAndre uh, D hop and Andre Johnson play for uh, the Texans. It's weird how that worked out. But. I, listen, I think it's a phenomenal trade for Carolina. You get to unless all these quarterbacks end up being bust or unless you get the quarterback that don't end up being good. And he go to another team and you misplay your hand as far as drafting the quarterback. Unless that happened, I don't really think it's a price too big that you pay for being. And plus, if you Carolina, you thinking to yourself, if we get our if we knock the quarterback out in this draft and like he a franchise dude, we're not drafting high in the draft every year anyway. So we're going to be giving up picks that's late in the draft. So I think it was a great move by Carolina. Um they got that much back for DJ Moore. That's that's pretty insane. Um, yeah, that that's that's a great move for Carolina, man. That that's a great move for Carolina. Um, I'm not a big Frank Wright guy though, so you know, interested to still see how this all work out for Carolina. Not not never a sure thing, especially when you draft in rookies, because you just don't know how rookie quarterbacks turn out in the NFL. Um, but. Also, this is a lot. Listen, DJ Moore can be as good as he want to be. But ultimately, his greatness will continue to be maxed out or capped out if he don't get a quarterback that can help him remove that cap and continue to grow. So DJ Moore is not just going to Chicago having to say, I'm the difference maker, my skill set. He got to also go to Chicago hoping that Justin Fields improve on his skill sets. Because it don't matter if Justin, if uh, DJ Moore can run the best routes in football or he can win physical catches or 50 50 catches and all these other. If Justin Fields don't improve in the areas he got to improve in, then none of this shit going to matter. So, like I said, decent trade, I guess, for the Bears. Great trade for Carolina. Um, Actually, I'm not even going to sugarcoat this. I don't think it was a good trade for the Bears. I don't think this trade will end up really paying no dividends for him. And I think they'll end up being in this game of will he won't like I I don't know what it is with the fucking NFC, man. I guess because and, and you know, maybe it's just me, but the way I look at the NFC is it's really no great quarterbacks in here. And the quarter the team's really not dictated by talent at quarterback more so than talent all around the roster. I got the perfect opportunity right now to go get me a quarterback for the future. So I really don't like the quarterback carousel that a lot of these teams play or the hoarding of bad quarterbacks. Like I talked to my home, one of my homies today said they would have uh, signed, re-sign uh, Saquon and release Daniel Jones. I was like, I would have let both of them go if I had the option. And if anything, I would have kept Saquon and let Daniel Jones walk because I'm not into paying bad quarterbacks to hold me over till I can hopefully get a good quarterback or to hope you can be decent enough to where maybe something happens. Like, I, I, I'm I, just not with that theory, with that way of thinking. So, I, listen, like I said, year three, a lot to prove for Justin Fields this year. Hopefully he come in and is a brand new quarterback. We'll see. That being said, I appreciate you for joining me on another episode of Kicking It With Saint. Tell somebody you fuck with them and tell somebody you love you can be anything in the world. Choose to be kind to somebody today. Saint out. I got the moves like hot sauce. Little mama taking the top off. I'm laying down getting topped off. After this, she know she getting knocked off. I know she loving the money. So I keep on thumbing and thumbing. She say she horny when she take a shot. So I keep them coming and coming. Now I'm putting dick in her tummy. Scoop her up like I'm raking her something. You would think shawty red track. The way that she running and running. You getting dumber and dumber. You out here chasing a bone. After she finished from giving me dome, the Uber is taking her home. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Dang.